brings the president closer to the issues underlying the sector and places him in a better stead to supervise this very important area. Under President Jammer's leadership, the introduction of new agricultural innovations and techniques is not limited to crop cultivation. Animal husbandry has had an impressive share of development. Again, the first and most important innovation is in Jammer's trend-setting style found in his enviable animal project in Kanilai. This is a symbolic venture representing the importance of agricultural enterprise, not only as a source of sustainable livelihood, but also as a means to nature conservation. Through his personal effort in developing and maintaining a zoo containing a variety of animal species, the president is invoking the natural human responsibility to preserve the environment. And by dint of his very caring nature, President Jame enjoys proximity to the animals while he patiently partakes in tendering them. Apart from the colorful spectrum of animal and bird species, Jame also has a successful aquaculture project in Kanelai. The pond for wild crocodiles, for example, is an outstanding attraction to visitors who marvel at the Gambian leader's extraordinary abilities to lead by example. But even to the locals, President Jame's personal industry and vision are ample inspiration to mobilize and move multitudes. No wonder his clarion calls for agricultural activity are resounding across the four corners of the Gambia and beyond. In the past, few Gambians cared of their adventure into domestic animal rearing. Now, a new breed of young Gambians are discovering the fruits of the president's philosophy and are venturing into commercial poultry farming or the traditional coastal trade of fishing, for instance. <laughs> Just a distance from the fishing shores of local towns and villages, some Gambians are harvesting produce from fields cultivated through President Jamis' inspiration, whilst others prepare eagerly for another farming season. It is an ecstatic drama provoked by a visionary leadership that was able to see what many elsewhere in the world had failed to see. All the farms that are used to sponsor people is from this farm. So, well, the name is, the, it is the President's farm, but the benefit uh, 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 spread all over the world. Uh, from here up to Indonesia, during the, the, they had, uh, the time they had the tsunami, we extended assistance to them. Jame has always been a leading advocate of massive agricultural production to ward off hunger and poverty in societies and ensure sustainable employment for the teeming mass of young people everywhere. Agriculture is the first industry and certainly it is here to stay, as long as humanity is in this world and the whole world has now recognized the need to rise to that noble call by Jame, the farmer president. This is the news in summary. As we approach the close down of transmission, I am the Ikumadem. President Jame recently gave approval for a 40 million euro housing project to commence and barely a few days after that development, Professor Jame himself laid the foundation stone of the intervention seeking to provide decent housing to different categories of civil servants. Officials of Solidarity Action, an NGO based in Barcelona, Spain, today called on the Vice President and Women's Affairs Minister. The organization's activities in the Gambia and plans to assist the health and education sectors dominated talks between Dr. Aja Isutunjai Saidi and the delegation. Parliamentarians are continuing to make headway in the annual scrutiny of audited accounts and financial statements of public bodies, and on Monday it was the Gambia Postal Services turn to go through the proceedings. The usual heated debates which characterize sittings at the chamber sort of toward for the loss to making gampos was given a compliance level of 83.3%. The Minister of Fisheries, Water Resources and National Assembly Matters has launched the Gambia Soul Fishery and the Kokul and Oyster Fisheries co-management plans. The plans were developed with financial and technical support from the USAID funded Gambia Senegalese project. 
and to news beyond our borders. Kenya's former higher education minister, William Ruthu, is denying allegations he played a part in the post-election violence that engulfed Kenya in 2007 and 2008. Rufo, who intends to contest Kenya's next presidential election, was reacting to the confirmation of charges of crimes against humanity brought against him and three other influential Kenyans by the International Criminal Court. Some Kenyans have welcomed the ICC decisions, but others believe it is a political plot to exclude William Ruthu and Uro Kenyatta from the presidential race. A court has ordered the deportation of a Rwanda genocide suspect. Liod Mokosira has been living in Quebec for 15 years and has fought numerous battles to avoid explosion. Authorities in Rwanda have held the ruling and promised Mokosira will receive a fair trial. The exiled Rwandan is accused of dangerous hate speeches that led to the more mass murder of Tutsis. You are reminded that you can follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website on www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS Radio Live. Well, that brings us to the end of the news in summary, which also brings us to the close down of this morning's transmission. Thanks for watching and do have a pleasant morning.